Mr. Keys, ITV, uh, did your son die in vain? Well, Alison, the only answer I can give to that is when I look at Iraq on my side TV screens today, the 200 plus deaths that took place the other day, I can only conclude that unfortunately and sadly my son died in vain. I think today what we've heard and what we've been reading is, has been really hard, and I think that's why there's a lot of mothers and fathers that's been in tears today. A lot of have held it back for weeks, and what's been confirmed today is really gut wrenched a lot of us. And personally, for myself, anger, that healing that 11 and a half years I've worked for, I've gone back to that time when I learned that my brother had been killed. And there is one terrorist in this world that the world needs to be aware of, and his name is Tony Blair, yeah. the world's worst terrorist. Yeah. worldwide effect. It's an indelible stain on the whole world. It reverberates around the world and, you know, governments have to recognise that the people that walk past those houses of power, we have voices and even those that are now no longer with us, we will be their voices and our voices yes, need so. to be heard and we will be heard. I think what it's changed, Martin, is that now we've had the endorsement of a thorough, robust inquiry. Yeah which has confirmed all our fine or, or our, the family's fears that these young men and women were deployed on the basis of a falsehood. Mm. And now we've had the backing of Sir John yeah. with our beliefs and it has now been mm. documented and it's given us a launch pad to go forward to search for, yes, more answers yeah. and bring those that we feel uh, who are responsible, maybe they need to be brought to account. And as Matthew has said, we'll look at whatever's appropriate given that when we've resourced the findings thoroughly, if that is a viable proposition. We now have some evidence to go forward with. I don't think Mr Baird be believed what he was. I think he was deliberately misleading. Uh, and that's become quite evident from just the, the 150 page summary. One thing I find very interesting that you're all reading from your phones, but why is he not here looking at us? If he's so sure of his decision, why is he not here looking at our eyes that and actually day. seeing our faces. And years um, ago we did ask to meet him and he walked away so this is his opportunity to even when he gave speak his, to the families now. When he gave his evidence it was definitely the Tony Blair show. He thinks he's the puppet mm -hmm. master pulling the strings. Yeah. Well, you know, Tony. But do you know we've proved him wrong because everything we've said for the start has actually come out today and I think he thought they're going to give up and mm. walk away. What would you say to him if he was here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I've been saying to the world. To look me in the eye. Yeah. Look me in the eye. Why did you kill my son? Send my son to be killed. Yeah, Matthew. Because <laughs> I hold time responsible for the murder of my son. So yeah. In response to the gentleman there, I think what we have to bear in mind is that the uh, intelligence reports were coming back, which were sporadic, patchy, untried, untested, mm. um, not to be re relied mm. upon. And by the time Tony Blair and Alistair Campbell had finished with it, it was detailed, authoritative up and running now, available to be deployed within 45 minutes. I firmly believe Tony Blair knew that was a lie yeah. and that was what was perpetrated upon the British public. Absolutely. And, and he knew that he was manufacturing and massaging the intelligence reports. He moulded it to how he wanted to present it to the world. He changed it from ifs, buts and maybes to definites, to definites. up and running now.